Um, there's no direct dietary sources for epinephrine and norepinephrine, but like I alluded to earlier, um, L-tyrosine, L-phenylalanine, converting into L-dopa, converting into dopamine, downstream can convert into norepinephrine and epinephrine. Moving over to epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, noradrenaline, which contributes to the flight or flight response that is uh, in response to stress. So when these are released, they increase heart rates, elevate blood pressure, direct blood flow to skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, preparing the body for immediate action. Epinephrine additionally stimulates the release of glucose from liver glycogen stores and triglycerides and glycerol from adipose tissue, providing rapid energy increases. Now, uh, I know what you're thinking. What about epinephrine for fat loss? Yes, to a certain extent that will help, but that's why we have uh, ephedrine and caffeine and aspirin stacks or clenbuterol, right? Or EpiPens. Guys, uh, let's save that for a fat loss video. We're trying to focus on productivity here, okay? Um, there's no direct dietary sources for epinephrine and norepinephrine, but like I alluded to earlier, um, L-tyrosine, L-phenylalanine, converting into L-dopa, converting into dopamine, downstream can convert into norepinephrine and epinephrine. So again, if you want your fight or flight response to be balanced, eat a balanced diet for sake. Symptoms of low epinephrine and norepinephrine are uh, fatigue, low energy, depression, low blood pressure, poor stress response and reduced alertness and high epinephrine and norepinephrine levels are uh, anxiety, nervousness, hypertension, increased heart rates, palpitations, restlessness and insomnia. How can we optimize these levels? Well, funnily enough, uh, as part of the fight or flight response, epinephrine and norepinephrine are released following strenuous aerobic and resistance training. So not only does um, working out healthily in the morning and in the afternoon improve all of the other neurotransmitters, including endorphins, encephalins, endocannabinoids, and anandamides, it also helps with epinephrine and noradrenaline levels. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having those slightly elevated at certain points in the day to elicit a fight or flight response so your heart rate can go up and you work on your cardiovascular health. All right, again, you don't want them to be super duper high, but just high enough to get through the workout and elicit some sort of neurotransmitter response, also allowing your endorphin levels and endocannabinoid levels to be elevated post-workout, which can be highly, highly pleasurable. So besides strenuous workouts, right? Uh, lift hard and heavy or go home and the side effects are gains. Well, this is not the end of the word, right? Uh, mucuna prurines of obviously contribute to L-dopa, which can um, downstream contribute to dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine levels. We alluded this earlier. L-tyrosine is a building block for uh, these adrenal hormones. L-phenylalanine, also a building block. Vitamin B6, B5, P in the conversion. Iron, of course, caffeine is making a comeback by blocking the adenosine receptors, can lower the effects of adenosine, making you more alert and overlap with this increased epinephrine and norepinephrine that might be secreted during a strenuous aerobic or strenuous resistance training. And um, this enhances the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. And caffeine is also directly known to enhance and temporarily elevate epinephrine levels. Uh, Ginkgo biloba extract might have a overlap with uh, epinephric neurotransmission. And then there's saffron extract, which again can have a positive influence on dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine levels in the brain. Now, I know what you're going to ask. Steve, what about the adoptogens which can help modulate norepinephrine and epinephrine levels, right? Rhodia rosea, ashwagandha root extract, Panax ginseng extract, Bacopa monieri extract, holy basil extract, ginkgo biloba extract, reishi mushroom extract, lion's mane extract, goto cola extract, cordyceps extract, cystens tuberosa extract, etc., etc., etc. Um, let's just save that for an adoptogens video. Let me know down below if you want to see a specific adoptogens video, even though I already went into the adoptogens for the optimized endurance deep dive video series. I think it was part two, but if you guys demand it, I don't mind making a separate video discussing all of the adoptogens that you can choose, not only for endurance, but overall productivity as well, right? The comment section is right there. Get busy. All right. 
So my uh, recommendations to optimize your epinephrine and norepinephrine levels would be as simple as going to the gym once or twice per day, right? Uh, daily fasted cardio in the morning and strenuous exercise later in the day after you've done all of your cognitive tasks. So you can get, can get a temporary fight or flight response, elicit a hypertrophy response, and then get a very high endorphin and very high endocannabinoid levels later on so you can relax. And then L-tyrosine, which obviously you're taking for dopamine, but thus you get sufficient amounts of norepinephrine and epinephrine levels through its metabolism. And then a saffron extract to kind of balance everything out.